All right, so let's talk about purchase orders uh, for inventory and then receiving the inventory in. Now I'm going to talk through a couple scenarios here. Okay, so with purchase orders, you can create a purchase order from an estimate or a quote. You can create a purchase order from a sales order, right? Uh, when you go in to create invoices, they don't have that purchase order in here as well. They assume that at the invoice stage that you already have purchased the product. Okay, so just FYI. So you can create it from there. The the reason that we don't always necessarily recommend creating it from the estimate or the sales order is because then you're creating a purchase order for one order, right? A customer orders five water bottles. You need to turn around and order five water bottles from your vendor. If you just order the five water bottles only, what happens when another customer comes in two hours later and orders 10 water bottles? So it would be a lot more efficient, right, if you did the ordering maybe once a day or twice a day and you combine what you need to order from your vendors uh, based on several orders, okay? And so the way you do that, of course, in QuickBooks Enterprise, the best way to do this is you come into your stock status by item report and you say, use a quantity available to reorder and it tells you all of the parts that you need to reorder and this is going to be parts you need to reorder based on all open sales orders or if you're manufacturing all open assemblies build assemblies and then you can create POs from based on that right so it's not tying a PO directly to a customer it's saying how much do I need to order to refill my stock or for all orders that are in the queue okay so that way is definitely recommended um, of course, you can also just go in and create a purchase order, and that's kind of what we're going to go through today. Now, again, I'm in QuickBooks Enterprise. Uh, during these demos, I like to show, you know, what what the entire, like the entirety of what's possible in QuickBooks, so that you can understand it. Um, in QuickBooks Enterprise, uh, you know, you can do that auto reorder. So that's specific to enterprise. However, in other versions of QuickBooks, you can still just go in and create a purchase order from scratch if you wanted to, or from a sales order as an example. Okay, so in here, in our purchase order screen, a purchase order is similar to a sales order or any other transaction. We can create different templates or have different templates or add fields to our purchase order as needed. So first of all, I select a vendor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose the accounting firm. You can have a class, uh, drop ship to, right? And so if you are doing it from a sales order, uh, creating the purchase order from a sales order, you can choose to drop ship it straight to a customer, okay? You have a date, PO number, right? Additional fields can be added. Again, custom fields can be added to this, which is helpful sometimes. Then we come down to the PO area down here and we do have find and select. So if we needed to, we could say, show me everything from preferred vendor, blah, um, or show me everything from custom field, whatever. The find and select, of course, is really important too because you can search within a search. So I say, okay, I know I'm looking for something with glass. Oh, I still have preferred vendor. Let me see, all fields. Reset, okay, so let's try that again. <laughs> Trying to find glass, I say search, and I go, oh gosh, there's a lot of glass. Okay, well, I know it is uh, white glass, and then it narrows it down for me even further, so anything that has white glass in it. Okay, so find and select is in there, but I'm basically just gonna add a, an item to the PO here, and I'm gonna say I have 10 of them. Now again, in enterprise, it's really important to keep note of your POs because this is going to relieve demand for ordering product. So what do I mean by that? When I come in here and I look at, I have 148 on hand, I have 100 on a sales order, 48 available, I have 155 on POs. So it's not going to trigger me to order this product because I already have them on order, right? So it does not trigger me if I go in and do my stock status by item. Notice that this item is not, it's not asking me to reorder it right now, right? Even though I have negative two quantity available for sale, because I have 105 on POs already, it's not triggering me to order it. So purchase orders really affect, you don't want to just throw a PO in the system and 
not worry about it. You want to be very aware of your purchase orders that are open and outstanding. Okay, so I have 10 in here. And then I'm just going to say save and close. Okay. Now again, I'm in enterprise. So I have this feature in enterprise called enhanced inventory, which comes with the silver, gold, and platinum editions of inventory of QuickBooks enterprise. Um, enhanced inventory is different than advanced inventory. I know it's confusing, but what I have and where this is really important is that it allows my item receipt to be a separate transaction from my bill. So if you're in QuickBooks Pro or Premier or even Enterprise and you have the enhanced inventory not turned on, uh, what happens is you receive the items in. Let's say I receive them in today, 9:23. Okay, I receive in my parts, and you know the guys in the warehouse receive it and they put in how many quantity I've received and they stick them on the shelf. <clears throat> then I get the bill and the bill's dated 10-1, right, for whatever reason. So in, again, if you don't have enhanced inventory turned on, what happens is you go put the bill in for 10-1 and you change the date to 10-1, right, so your payables are correct. It actually replaces the item receipt. So now those items do not show up on your balance sheet. They don't show up on your quantity on hand until 10-1. Okay, so with the enhanced inventory, we can keep those two transactions separate. So you receive the items in, they hit your inventory account goes up, right? Debits inventory and it credits a receive not invoiced account, which is like another current liability account. And then when I enter the bill, it debits the received, not in, the received not invoiced account, right, to offset for my item receipt, and then it credits my accounts payable. But it allows those two transactions to be on two separate days. So I can say I received them in on 923, the bill's dated 101, it doesn't matter. And you can do it the other way around, right? I could say the bill's dated 91 because they made us pay ahead of time, and I didn't receive the items in until 923. All right, so something to consider. Do not turn it on without talking to us, though, because if you turn it on, you can't turn it off. And there are some reasons why some people shouldn't use it. Okay. All right. So again, my PO, I'm just going to go in and receive my item. So I say, hey, we got a shipment from an accounting firm. Pops up and says, you have open purchase orders for this particular vendor. Do you want to receive against a PO? So I'm going to say yes. So I have that PO open in here. Okay. In Enterprise, again, you can scan items in. If you're scanning items in, if you check this box, it'll add an additional column called quantity received, right? So that you can scan, bloop, bloop, bloop. But I'm just gonna leave that unchecked for now. And I'm gonna say we only received five of these, okay? Oh, and I have to say what site, because I have multiple sites turned on, of course. Now on this screen here, notice that because again, this is something with enhanced inventory, I don't have any pricing on here, so that's something to be aware of. Um, I can attach documents to here, so if the warehouse is in a separate location, right, from accounts payable, they can scan in that packing slip maybe. That's really helpful. But if I go look at my PO now, right, it's going to show me that I have five back ordered, I've received five, I have none on a bill yet. Okay. So then we're going to go in now and say enter bills and we have a bill from accounting firm and it has that PO still there. Now notice that it pulls through for me only the five that I've received, which is nice. This is my trigger. Wait, wait a second. My bill, my physical bill, right, that they're, they've sent to me says that they're billing me for 10, but only five are here. So that is my trigger, right, to go in, look at history open up the PO, see, oh, you know, we've only received five of these, call the warehouse, see why they only have received five. And anyway, so it's your kind of trigger, your second guessing there. And then we can go ahead and say save when we're entering the bill. Okay. So again, entering the bill affects accounts payable. Entering the item receipt affects inventory quantity on hand and value on hand. All right, and then of course from there we go through and we pay bills. And there are a ton of different workaround scenarios that we can take you through. Everybody's got some things a little different, but from a high level overview, that's how you enter a purchase order for an inventory part and receive the item.